Good afternoon, Cougar Nation, and welcome to a new edition of the Cougar Tracks podcast on kslsports.com. I'm your BYU insider, Mitch Harper. The Cougar Tracks podcast is streaming live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the KSL Sports YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter pages. It's also available in podcast form on all major podcasting platforms. So for those of you listening on the podcast feed, appreciate you, appreciate all of you watching here on a live stream, whatever platform you are using today. It's Wednesday, August 17th. Here's the roadmap for today's show. Talking BYU football fall camp, as always, as camp hits double digits. Day 10 in the books, day 11 today. And then we'll have more observation coming up on day 12. You'll also hear from interviews with Michael Daly and Caleb Hayes, a young BYU linebacker and a veteran cornerback heading into the 2022 season. And I'll give you my rankings for the position units on this BYU football team. So a lot to unpack on this edition of the podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Mitch underscore Harper, and we'll go in that direction today. So, also, a quick side note before we get into everything. Coming up tonight, BYU Cougar kickoff at the Student Athlete Building taking place. It should be kind of fun. I'll be down there covering the event. It's from 6 o'clock to 8 at the Student Athlete Building, and they're going to have tours of the locker room for fans to go check out, which I think, I got to say, is great. This is something that BYU has needed to do is give back to the fans because the past couple of years since the pandemic, there hasn't been much give back to the fans. There's been a lot of expectation of, hey, we'd love it if you donated money. We've got this NFT marketplace. You can spend money there. Hey, support Built Bars. Uh, keep donating to the Cougar Club level up because the new Big 12 era. There's been a lot of, spending and asking maybe for for money but not much given back in return to the fans so tonight at the cougar kickoff they're going to do tours of the locker room and i think that's great for the fans to be able to see that up close and in person because they just haven't had a a, a much of a chance to be close to this byu football program since the pandemic and that's been kind of one of the downsides to all of this success the past two years the team has been for the most part, kind of kept at a distance because of the pandemic. And tonight should be a great way to bring fans together with the team. They had some fan fests back in May, which were a lot of fun as well. Uh, but uh, these sort of things matter. Uh, they build up fan bases and I think grow a new generation of fans. I think Cosmo is going to be there. There's going to be some bounce houses. So it should be a good time. If, uh, if you're around, say hi, and uh, we can talk some Cougar football in person as well. Uh, again, BYU football fall camp hit day 10 yesterday, and I thought there were some good observations. I brought up some pieces on kslsports.com. So did Matt Biamonte, if you want to see the full breakdown. I thought Jacob Conover had his best day, at least in front of the media. Uh, the media observation window that Conover played and performed in, I thought he was fantastic. And that's a bright spot. That's what I think everyone wanted to see coming into this season was Jacob Conover is head and shoulders QB2, and he's a guy that uh, gives you hope that he could be QB1 into the Big 12 era. And I thought at day 10 of practice, he showed those flashes that he could be a future starting quarterback and a successful one at BYU. The talent's there. I think it's just a matter of the confidence. And I think that anxiety bit that he talked about last season uh, is valid. And if he feels like he's overcome that and conquered that, that's a huge step in in his personal life, one. And two, uh, just for his mental health and him as a football player as well. So I think that's going to be a nice step in the right direction. A lot of players were out yesterday. And again, I know one of the themes of fall camp has been we're going to keep players out, give them some rest. Some of those guys included tight end Dallin Holker, who the Deseret News reported uh, from a conversation with Steve Clark that uh, Holker's dealing with a little bit of a knee issue. Uh, so it, it was no surprise that uh, he's dealing with a, a, a knee issue, uh, considering he missed last week on Monday, missed a scrimmage, and then, of course, missed on Tuesday as well. Uh, but as long as he's ready for the game, 
And that's all indications are is that he will be ready for the game. And there's been no season ending injuries in camp. So knock on wood there. BYU's doing all right in that regard. Uh, other players that sat out, Earl Tuioti Mariner, uh, Isaiah Glasker, quarterback Soljay Mayava Peters, who is in a th in that third quarterback race with Cade Finnegan. And keep in mind, this is during the media observation portion. These guys could have played earlier, but at least during the media observation window, these guys were sidelined. Uh, same with Isaiah Moa as well. One of the guys that's been really interesting to me to watch in fall camp has been a young linebacker in Michael Daly. And Daly's a guy, he's a redshirt freshman in the BYU program, and he's someone that I think has a big, big future ahead of him in his BYU football career. I caught up with Michael recently during fall camp to kind of see how his really first full fall camp where he's healthy, he's back at it from the mission, how camp's been going for him. And this is my chat with BYU redshirt freshman Michael Daly here on the Cougar Tracks podcast. So, Michael, how's fall camp treating you? It's been great so far. It's really great to – it's always good to get back after summer and just to get back with all the boys and just kind of get the plays down and the install and then kind of just compete against the offense. Obviously, we have a great offense this year. We have a great defense. And so I'm really excited to see how, you know, this year pans out. But I feel like we our preparation has been good, and I feel like everyone's been working really hard to get better. So, How was your uh, – you know, when you came back from the mission – last year uh well maybe just describe your mission and and that road back to getting back to that typical self of yours that you were in at Lone Peak yeah no I I love my mission um I love every I actually served in two places I served in uh, Uruguay or Uruguay and then I finished my mission in Washington but yeah coming back man it was tough like your hamstrings your entire body's just it's just not quite there but uh for sure I'd say takes a good like nine months nine months to a year to really kind of get back and get comfortable in your body so um i'd say now i feel great i feel back to myself and it feels good to finally be able to go out and compete without having to worry about tearing a hammy or something so that part's good where have uh, you been competing uh in practice so far right now i'm competing at mike backer and so obviously we have keenan and, and pepe there as well um there right now um but i'm just really just trying to get on the field in whatever way that i can whether it's special teams whether they need me at mike on certain packages so um, right now, I'm just trying to do whatever it takes to kind of help the team win, and I'm good wherever they have me. So, saw you uh, in day one. I think got a Jake Robinson at tip ball, and you came in with the interception. How'd that feel? It felt good. Our linebackers coach Kevin Cluen always tells us, like, "Hey, burst to the ball. The second the ball gets thrown, just turn it and go and run as fast as you can to it. You never know what the tip." And you know, that was just kind of a, an example of what happens when you do. So, I mean, I I looked back and Jacob tipped it up, and I just dove and I caught it. So I just kind of made a play off another teammate's play as well. So it was great. And. Uh, Last few things here for you, Michael. What are some things that uh, you're working on to improve in your game? I'd say it's the mental side. Obviously, in high school, I was more of a rush defensive end. And so a lot of that, every play, I was really just rushing the quarterback, worrying about getting pressure, making plays in the backfield. But at Mike Backer, it's really just being a leader on the defense and really, you know, just knowing what everyone's assignment is and then doing yours as well. And so for me, it's just kind of the ability to drop back in coverage. And there's so many different things that go on. But for me, I'm really just trying to focus on the mental side of the game and kind of be the player that, that this team needs me to be. And so that's kind of what my, I'm trying to do right now. So, all right, last thing, uh, how's uh, John Henry doing? <laughs> John Henry's good. John Henry has like nine months left on his mission. Uh, I talk to him basically every every week or every other week, and uh, I miss him a ton. Obviously, my younger brother, we're best friends. So, uh, I miss him, but he'll be home soon, and it'll be great to play with him and have him back. So, well, cool. It's it's good to see the the daily name back here at uh, BYU and uh, uh, stay healthy, and, and uh, best of luck to you this season and in your BYU career, Michael. Thank you. Nice to see you. There you go. That's Michael Daly with a quick catch up on uh, how fall camp is going for him. He's talented. I mean, he he is a great athlete. He has a big future ahead of him at BYU. Huge. Uh, I think the potential is endless for Michael Daly. His talent's off the charts. I, I think that he's one of those guys that the, the next wave of star linebackers for BYU, he's in that grouping. You heard it there. He's in that Mike linebacker spot. Keenan's there. Pepe Tanavasa is there so it's going to be hard for him to maybe even make the travel roster but i think he's talented enough to where he might still earn a spot uh, because you always have to dig into your de depth and michael daly if injuries happen he'll be ready on call to i think step up if byu needs him this season speaking of the linebackers i thought keenan peely had an excellent practice observation period in on tuesday i thought he looked Closest to his self that he was last September, if that makes sense. You know, because after he went down in that Arizona State game, 
BYU's defense was altered completely, and I think his presence alone uh, gives BYU a lot of comfort on that second level of the defense. You bring back him, Peyton Wilgar, those guys are getting closer, what it seems, to being back to their usual self. They're, they're not going to be any healthier than probably where they're at right now because once you get to the bumps and bruises of a season and you're dealing with that contact week in and week out and BYU goes 10 straight weeks without a buy, uh, they're probably not going to be any healthier than they are right now. But the good news is, is that they are close to 100%. It looks, at least it feels that way and it looks that way for Keenan Peely and Peyton Wilgar. Those are two potential NFL guys. And if BYU has their full collection of personnel, this defense will be better than what they were last year if they can maintain the health. You know, I don't solely just say, you know, the defense that was early in the season, if they maintain all those guys, that would have carried over throughout the entire year. Uh, you know, that's that's hard to say. But I do think that with how much continuity is there, how much returning experience, this defense could surprise a lot of folks. And I thought on, on Tuesday, the defense decisively won the day and was impressive. I thought the defensive line was active. Fisher Jackson, Tyler Batty, they performed well. I think that this this group has a bit of a chip on their shoulder to where they really want to prove everyone wrong that hey, stop doubting us. We're going to prove we're going to prove you wrong. I mean, I've doubted, you know, I I'm candid. I mean, that's where the questions lie for me. I think this offense is going to be outstanding. I don't look at this offense and see a glaring weakness. The weakness could be maybe at tight end if Dallin Holker isn't full strength. Isaac Rex even admitted he's not 100%. He's working his way to being that. But he might not be 100% until maybe the bowl game. So maybe the tight end could be a little bit of a weakness if those top two guys aren't at their best. Ethan Erickson's a bright spot, and he's someone that Aaron Roderick has highlighted quite a bit uh, this this fall camp, Lane Lunt got a lot of tight end reps on Tuesday. But, you know, that could be a spot where there could be some current concern if you have some health issues. But outside of that, if you stay healthy at the top end of that offense, uh, it's a loaded group and you can win ball games. You can even win ball games, I think, with Jacob Conover. I'm coming around to that thought as well, too. I don't know if you can beat Notre Dame's. I don't know if you can beat Arkansas. But you can beat. Definitely the East Carolinas, the Liberties on the schedule. You can maybe even beat a Boise State potentially, I think, with Jacob Conover. That's going to be a tough game. And But I, that's, that's where I kind of sit right now with this team. And another spot on the defense that might be the biggest strength, and we'll talk about the position rankings for this 2022 team coming up here a little bit later in the show, so stay tuned for that. Caleb Hayes at cornerback. I think he's BYU's best defensive back entering the 2022 season. I think he's the best one. I think he might be the best potential NFL prospect. Who could be the guy that continues that DB line of getting guys to the league? Chris Wilcox broke through, broke the seal. After a long drought of defensive backs not getting drafted, Chris Wilcox goes in the seventh round to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the 2021 draft. And I think it's changed a lot of the outlook on BYU. I think DBs now say, hey, Coach G, he's getting guys to the league at BYU. I could do that. I think Caleb Hayes might be the next in line. Here's my chat with Caleb Hayes from fall camp here on the Cougar Tracks podcast. Caleb Hayes joining us now. And uh, Caleb, how's it feel to have a full year under your belt in this defensive system? Just maybe the confidence is giving you going into 2022. Oh, yeah, it feels amazing. Um like, you know, just being able to learn and actually, you know, play within the defense and like, you know, with the with the boys, it makes me feel uh, very relaxed and confident within my game. And then I can like, you know, since I know the defense, I can actually um, change a few things up on my side and, uh, you know, communicate everything well so everybody can be on the same page. So it's been it's been great. How's the, the competition been? Uh, you know, you, D'Lo, Judy Lally and then uh, Jacob Robinson all there appear to be maybe the top four. Uh, how, how's the competition been? Oh, it's been also great, man. It's probably um, the best competition. I'll say I've been in uh, college football and you knowing that, uh, but also knowing like, you know, we can also learn from one another and um, become great. You know, we can actually, it doesn't matter who's on the field. Everybody's going to play very well. And, um, you know, uh, 
just trusting one another and just become one as a team. <laughs> you enjoying uh, Coach G's uh, bike ride messages? Is is does it hit to the? Have you seen them? Nah. The social media with uh, Coach Hadley. They're riding on the morning bike ride. Right, the so, inspirational messages. So I actually took off my social media um, for the whole month of fall. So like I'm not really looking on social media, or I've been on it because he like you know. I'm just trying to focus on this season and everything like that. But uh, I'm for sure going to look at their, um, you know, be, uh, beginning of September. Avoiding uh, distractions then, I, I would imagine, right? Because this is this could be a big year for you. I believe it's your last season in college football, right? Yeah, most definitely. It's going to be a really great um, – it's, it's a very important year for me, myself, um, this team, and definitely for my family, um, everybody that and whoever has supported me. Um, you know, we could, they kind of invested in me, so I want to, you know, cash in on these um, chips and coins and uh, really make money from this year. But uh, yeah, but if you actually look at my Instagram, it says MIA. I'll be gone for like a month. So, <laughs> hey, last thing for you, Caleb, we'll let you let you go. Um, just maybe some personal goals and and team goals that uh, you and the team have on defensive side in 2022. Uh, first, we want to play. I like how I would like to say 90% football as in we want to be as nearly as perfect as possible, um, be able to communicate and um, don't give the other team any cheap ones or things that, you know, we shot ourselves with the foot. We want to uh, play within ourselves. Uh, we want to be, uh, of course, try to lead and uh, beat the team and um, – uh, turnovers, of course, you know, turnovers win games. So that's something that we kind of emphasize a lot for the defense and for my DB group. Uh, and yeah, we just want to just play and just have, so have fun. You know, this is a really fun year. We're a really tough schedule. Um, everybody is very much respected, but not feared, but this is, uh, it's going to be great. This defense is going to shock many people, I feel. And, um, it's going to be one of the best years at BRU history. Three weeks away till south florida and tampa is there any worry about that heat that humidity in florida uh no not really uh i haven't really thought about that you know it was always i think it's honestly just preparation just with um each individual scene of course like you know you don't want to be not dehydrated and everything so i think you know the boys are very well mature and very well um self-taught and self-put to uh you know to um, prepare for these situations um you know, because at the end of the day, we got to go out there and perform our best ability. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, uh, very excited for USF because I feel like they're going to be a really great uh, team and um, going to really surprise people for themselves. So, you know, I'm looking forward for that. Caleb, we're looking forward to watching you this season and stay healthy and look forward to a big year for, for you and this defense. I uh, appreciate you, my man. Caleb Hayes here on Cougar Tracks podcast. Always insightful. Good to catch up with Caleb. I think he is a, uh, a talented football player on this team. And uh, I think he's someone to to potentially monitor, I think, for the next level in the NFL. So thanks again to Caleb for joining the program. I teased it earlier. My position rankings, my power rankings for BYU football entering the 2022 seasons. Now, I got up a piece on kslsports.com on this so you can see the full list. I'll break it down line item by line item. But this was a tough exercise, I must say. Uh, it was a difficult thing to do because this team's good. There's a lot of position uh, that's – there's a lot of positions where I'm thinking, this is too low for this group. But at the same time, who do I put them above? So we'll start off with number one because I think the least suspense – is there. And I think the number one position unit for BYU, it's along the offensive line. When you're talking about Blake Freeland, Clark Barrington, Connor Pay, Campbell Barrington, Kingsley Suamataia, that to me is your top five. And then you got Harris Lachance, Joe Tukuafu, Braden Kime, Sione Vicoso, Tyler Little, talented football guys. And it's a good offensive line unit that's going to be the foundation for this team. So they're number one. I don't think that's that's an outlandish take. I think that's a pretty fair assessment of this team. Number two, wide receiver. Puka Nakua, Gunnar Romney, Keanu Hill. That's probably your starters. Then Braden Cosper, Chase Roberts, Cody Epps, Parker Kingston is key reserves for BYU. The wide receiver room, the evolution there under the direction of Fessy Satake has been remarkable. And I think it's only going to continue to get better because you think long-term into the Big 12 era, you got Devin Downing, who's going to be gray-shirting this year. 
you've got a host of talented receivers coming through the pipeline. BYU is in a great spot when it comes to wide receivers in this program. Number three, I did go on the defensive side, linebacker. The linebacker spot is good. Peyton Wilgar, talked about him earlier. Keenan Peely as well. Ben Bywater, who you've heard on this program. Max Tooley, a little bit thinner. Uh, Max is a little bit this year. It looks like physically, have to get ca caught up with him, but he looks slightly lighter than last season. Almost looks like he's a he's a DB. Curious to see how he holds up. Pepe Tanavasa, Kavika Gagne, Morgan Piper, Michael Daly, just to name a few at that linebacker spot. Number four, quarterback. And this speaks to the talent of Jaron Hall. I think the respect that I have for Jaron Hall, what I think he's going to be this season, I think one of the 10 best quarterbacks in college football this year. That's why I put this, this room higher than probably you would think. As a whole, you know, Jacob Conover is solid. I think he could win games for BYU this year. I feel you know, a lot more comfortable about that going into the season. After Conover, I don't really know, have much intel or much confidence in any one after Conover at this point. Uh, and that's always a little bit risky too, because you always want to have that, that third spot feeling good too. It's, it's hard to maintain in the transfer portal era, uh, but BYU has had to dip to that third quarterback. It happened last year. I mean, it happens. You have to do that. So you want that to be in a good spot, but the talent of Jaron Hall makes this, I think the fourth best position unit for BYU football. Number five, cornerback. You heard from Caleb Hayes. I think he's the best cornerback BYU has paired up with D'Angelo Mandel, Gabe Judy Lally, Jacob Robinson. The depth there at cornerback is a lot better than it's probably been in a long time. The, the freshmen, they're not making the instant debt dent that I thought they might, but they're getting opportunities in practice and it's going to be valuable down the road. Really wanted to see Quinton Rice in this fall camp, but haven't seen him at all, which has been a bummer because he was someone that I thought as a redshirt freshman would really make a climb uh, in the in the cornerback room, but haven't seen him uh, in fall camp. He's been on the sidelines, just haven't seen him participating in live action. Number six specialist, Rico and Jake Oldroyd. Now, I might have put these guys higher if I knew for a fact Jake Oldroyd was going to play every single game. You know, Jake's got that lower back injury that it's sensitive. It's kind of a touch and go deal. And something to watch for against USF and pretty much every week, you know, the pregame warmups are, are, are kind of a tell all for, for old droid status, how he kicks in the game. And it might be turned to Justin Smith. And I think there's a bit of a drop off to Justin Smith. Smith has done a nice job, but when old droid is on and he's healthy, he was darn near a Lou Groza award winner in 2020. Health has been the thing that's kind of hurt his maybe consistency Rico's a huge punter I mean massive guy massive leg he might be one of the best punters in college football this year but you might not see him because I think BYU's offense is going to be pretty aggressive number seven tight end and fullback again as I said it stated earlier you keep Holker you keep Rex healthy this spot will be really good you also have Mason Wake you also have Houston Haymooley a lot of talent there in that room running back at number eight Chris Brooks leads the way He's fantastic. I'm telling you, watching him in fall camp is a treat. That guy brings the physicality. He is him. As I said in my practice recap on Tuesday, he is him. That is Chris Brooks. Key reserves, Lopini Katoa, Jax McChesney, Miles Davis, and Hinkley Folau Ripati. Number nine, defensive ends. I'm trending up on this group heading into the season. Tyler Batty, Earl Tui, OT Mariner, probably your, your projected starters. Then the key reserves, Blake Mangelson, Fisher Jackson, Alden Tofa, and Isaiah Moa. Not bad. I mean, it's, I think Alden Tofa was coming on late last season. Batty, we all know his name, the potential he's got. Earl, I've sang the praises of him all throughout the offseason. Mangelson, though, physically, man, he is, he is tall. He is a huge, huge D end. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he turns into over the course of his career. Number 10, safety. Now, Ed Lamb told me and Matt Biamonte that Ammon Hanneman has a leg up in the competition. No surprise there. He's going to be a starter alongside Malik Moore. Uh, but then some of the key reserves, Talon Alfrey, 
Micah Harper, Preston Rex, Hayden Livingston. Those are kind of the key guys. Micah Harper's been dealing with an ankle injury, and it's kind of limited him in seeing his best. I think a lot of people thought maybe he would step in and be that starter at safety. But again, I said it before fall camp, it's going to be Ammon Hanneman uh, because he knows the defense. He's solid. He's sound. I just think that that spot, I want to see that elite safety on that back end of the defense. BYU's had some great safeties over the years. Could be Malik Moore. I think he's capable of that. But even he has said he's got to be better as a tackler. That's something he's working on. So we'll see how Malik develops in that regard. Malik did enough last year, I think, to get on the radar, potentially of NFL teams. Maybe he could be an undrafted free agent. Uh, this is a big year for Malik, who graduated from BYU. He's navigated a lot. Was once a wide receiver, switched over to corner, then worked his way over to safety. This is his year to shine. And he played the most snaps last season. So talking about guys that are never going to probably leave the field, it's Malik Moore. Then number 11, the last position, defense tackles. It's not that I don't think that this group can't be good. I think they could be pretty dang good still. But who do you put them over? Projected starters, either Caden Haas or Gabe Summers or Lorenzo Fawatea. Fawatea probably is a lock. Then either Summers or Haas, depending on where they go. He reserves Atunai Samahe, Josh Larson, and John Nelson. Again, that's not bad. It's not a, it's not a, if that's your last rated position unit, that speaks to how good this BYU football team is. It's just, I think there's no established, consistent standout in that group. Fawate has had flashes, but he's always been hurt. Now he's healthy and he's doing well. Atunai Samahe is coming back from a shoulder. When he's healthy, I love Nisa. He's got to be healthy though. Josh Larson's reinvented his body. John Nelson's one of the, uh, up and coming guys that a lot of people around the program think is going to be huge and big time at BYU. I got to see it. I, I don't think you can you can base potential and put that position group higher right now. So that's my position group rankings. You can see the full list on kslsports.com with a further breakdown. So had a lot of fun putting that position group rankings together. It's drawn drawn some interesting reactions. I must say. Uh, it's always fun to get the reactions uh, on any sort of take or ranking, but hey, that's why we do this. This is the media. We got to give some strong takes. That's what I strive to do and give you my honest opinions on this BYU football team. But that's going to do it for this edition of the Cougar Tracks podcast. I hope all of you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the show on Apple, Google Play, Spotify. Leave a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a ton. I'll be back on Friday with a new edition of the show, recapping day 12 of BYU football fall camp. I'll be at the Cougar kickoff tonight. So again, if you see me, stop by, say hi, and we'll talk some BYU football. So catch you on Friday here on the Cougar Tracks podcast. It's always powered by kslsports.com. Oh, 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 o